This is Microsoft's answer to the Apple Silicon revolution. This is the new Snapdragon X Plus Surface laptop. Obviously the big news has been the Snapdragon X Elite, the real top of the line chip, but this is the absolute base model Surface laptop and it is clearly designed to undercut the MacBook Air. This thing costs $999. And that is exactly the same price as the M2 MacBook Air and $100 less than the M3 MacBook Air. So to keep things extra fair, we've got an M2 MacBook Air for a perfect one-to-one -one comparison for two machines that cost the exact same, and neither of which have the latest and greatest chip. So I'm very curious to see where this goes. And if you are too, make sure to leave a like down below and subscribe. Let's get into it right after a word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Eufy and their new S1 Pro floor washing robot vacuum. Powered by their revolutionary always clean mop, which as an industry first washes the mop while it's mopping, S1 Pro can cover a massive 450 square meters with just three liters of water. And thanks to a dual water tank, clean and dirty water are stored separately for easy drainage and maximum cleaning power. It also features EcoClean ozone technology, which generates ozone to sterilize the clean water. The vacuum features 8,000 pascals of suction, plus a detangling brush and two side brushes to make sure hair and debris are efficiently sucked into the cleaning bag. And S1 Pro does all of this in a form factor just 96 millimeters in height. That means it can be drilled into low rise homes and can fit easily underneath furniture. With advanced features like active binocular, infrared imaging technology, and LiDAR to build a 3D map of your space and power obstacle avoidance, a simple app or built-in LCD control, and more, this thing is seriously powerful. So to learn more about Eufy S1 Pro, check out the links in the description below. And now let's get back to the video. All right, so let's see what we get with our Surface laptop. Mine is in silver because the fancy colors are reserved for the higher end configurations, of which there are quite a lot because this lineup is heinously confusing. I mean, they gotta clean this up. It's just kind of a nightmare to look at. But anyway, so we've got a little booklet here with the co-pilot key, power, charging, stuff like that. We have a charger, is that it? Fair enough, don't need much. Let's go ahead and check out the laptop. Well, it looks <laughs> it looks very MacBook Airy. I will tell you that. Aluminum unibody construction. We've got a really simple, very clean bottom plate with no visible screws. I assume those are under the feet. The IO selection, very similar to Apple's. We've got a proprietary charge point, just like Apple has MagSafe. There's a headphone jack, two USB-C ports, but the Surface Laptop adds in a regular USB type A port, and I'm sure people are definitely going to appreciate to that. To set up your device using a screen reader. That's familiar too. And we've even got the rounded bezels that Apple has on the latest generation MacBook Air. So this is a very comparable experience. Now you could say that they maybe copied Apple's homework a little bit here, but you could also say that they're adopting a lot of the really nice design cues that a lot of modern laptops use. But if there's one design cue that Microsoft definitely didn't copy, it's the setup process. The first thing that the Surface Laptop did when connect to Wi-Fi is update for about 40 minutes. Hurry up, I'm bored. And after that setup process completes, you're gonna have to sit through about 150 sales pitches trying to sell you Microsoft 365 Plus and more cloud storage and whatever that you have to skip through. That took about 15 minutes all on its own. As a Mac user who can go from unboxed to fully set up in less than 10 minutes, it's easy to forget these things. But that's not specific to this laptop, it's mainly just a Windows laptop thing. And I have to say that when you look at this thing as a package, they've done a really good job at emulating a lot of what the MacBook Air is good at. The build quality on this thing is absolutely superb. The fit and finish and the quality of materials is really, really nice and premium. The keyboard is incredible, very responsive and tactile, and the trackpad has a sort of a force touch haptic effect to it. It's very, very similar to what Apple is using, and I think that this is one of the better Windows trackpads that I've ever used. It's pretty clear here that Microsoft is trying to make the Windows version of the MacBook Air. It's the simple premium Ultrabook that is designed to be used by literally anybody from students 
to working professionals to grandparents. In fact, the only thing that really bothers me about this design is the bezels are uneven. They're slimmer on the sides than they are on top. But bezels, of course, very, very minor. What's more important is the screen itself. And this is a really nice panel, and it adds a couple of nice bonus features that you don't get on a MacBook Air. For one, it's a touch screen. Maybe one day Apple will do that, but they're taking their sweet time. And there's Windows Hello facial recognition for logging in instead of Touch ID over on the MacBook. However, the display panel itself is quite simply not as good. In comparing the two panels, it seems like the Surface Laptop has slightly deeper blacks, but the MacBook Air more than makes up for that with its incredibly lifelike and vibrant colors and its contrast ratio, which absolutely dunks all over the Surface Laptop. Now granted, neither of these machines have OLED or mini LED, so you can definitely do better than both of them, but for what they are, $1,000 Ultrabooks, the MacBook Air is definitely better. If you're doing graphic design or anything with color grading, this is probably something to keep in mind. Although you do get some benefits with the Surface Laptop. For example, it has a 120 hertz refresh rate. That is really nice to see on an Ultrabook because normally they don't tend to do that. Also important for an Ultrabook are the speakers. And I have to say they're very similar. Microsoft did a great job with the speakers on this thing, they sound very, very similar to the MacBook Air. But look, I can't delay it any further. We gotta talk about performance because we now have comparable Mac and PC that are both running ARM chips. For what they are, $1,000 Ultrabooks, it is worth comparing to see how they perform stacked up against each other. Now, first of all, in Cinebench 2024, the Snapdragon X Plus does show its strength. It has two extra cores compared to the M2 chip, and you can really see that paying off with this score, and it even edges out the M3 MacBook Air in this test. But because these are ARM chips and compatibility is going to be a big factor, you're going to find that results will vary. For example, in the Blender Classroom GPU test, the M2 MacBook Air absolutely curb stomps the Snapdragon X Plus, beating it by more than four and a half minutes. And if we switch over to the GPU test, the biggest problem for the Snapdragon X Plus is that it doesn't have any acceleration yet. ARM chips for Windows are pretty new and it's gonna take some time for this to be implemented, but for the time being, if you run this thing compared to the M2 MacBook Air with metal acceleration, it's not even close. We're talking over 15 minutes compared to less than five. And even if you disable metal render acceleration, the M2 MacBook Air still beats the Snapdragon by more than five minutes. But remember, compatibility is important here. Rise of the Tomb Raider, which is a game that is not native for Apple Silicon, but runs well in emulation, seems to run just as well in emulation on the Snapdragon chip. Both of these things at 1920 by 1200 at medium settings are scoring 30 FPS exactly. However that game is being ported, it seems to like these chips just about equally. And so when you look at these performance figures, I think mainly the, the takeaway here is that it is really early. The M2 chip is a lot more mature than these new Snapdragon chips. So I expect that these performance numbers could change dramatically from one month to the next. But given that this is basically Snapdragon's M1 chip, I'm really impressed with how it's performing, especially considering that this is the lesser powerful of the chips they announced. They're setting a really strong baseline for performance here, and I'm excited to see how it improves in the coming months and years. But the one thing that they definitely need to work on from a hardware perspective is thermal management. This is not a fanless machine. The M2 MacBook Air is, in fact, it has been since the M1. But while it's impressive to look at the performance of the Snapdragon X Plus, we do have to keep in mind that it has active cooling and you are gonna hear that. It's not super duper loud, but it is audible and I did hear it for every single one of these benchmark tests. So it's not like on the 14 or 16 inch MacBook Pro where it might kick in occasionally. 
it is a little bit closer to a traditional Windows laptop where it kicks in most of the time. And the surface temperatures are gonna run hotter as well. Midway through my Cinebench run, the MacBook Air was reading 36 degrees Celsius on the top of the keyboard deck, but the Snapdragon was reading 45 degrees Celsius. So it's definitely a noticeable difference. I would say the MacBook Air can get warm when it's under load, but the Surface laptop was hot. But with all that being said, this guy definitely runs cooler and quieter than basically any Intel machine that I've ever used. So there's only one thing that I have left to test, and that's the battery life. This is something that Apple Silicon excels at, and Snapdragon has made some pretty big promises. Now, probably the most important test for machines like this is gonna be video playback. So I let these guys run for almost four hours playing back a 4K video, and that left the MacBook Air at 61% battery and the Surface Laptop at 51. And at that point I had to go to bed, so I closed the lids and came back 10 hours later in the morning to find that the Surface Laptop had drained down to 49% and the MacBook Air down to 60. And that's actually a very important test because a lot of PC laptops drain a significant amount of battery when they're on standby. Apple Silicon machines are really, really good about that. Losing 1% overnight is pretty crazy. And the Surface Laptop did good, only losing 2%. And then we did another three and a half hours of video playback, which left the MacBook Air at 36% battery with the Surface Laptop at 12. And this is where you really start to see Apple Silicon shining through. Remember earlier when I talked about the extra fan noise and heat in the performance category? Well, that is going to contribute to more power consumption. So the MacBook Air unquestionably won that hands down. But to further emphasize the point, I charged them both back up to 100 and I ran Cinebench twice. So that's only like a 20 or 25 minute test, but we're maxing out the CPU. And in doing so, the MacBook Air went from 100 down to 90%, but the Surface Laptop went from 100 down to 65. And it's also worth noting that the MacBook Air has a slightly smaller battery, 52.6 watt hours compared to the Surface Laptop's 54, and I've also had this MacBook Air for two years now, so it really was at the disadvantage, and that really emphasizes just how efficient Apple Silicon is. So I think this comparison illustrates a couple of really key things. The first is that, man, Apple Silicon is really, really good. This is now a two generation old chip with M4 chips probably coming to the Mac in a couple of months. And the fact that it is able to be competitive even faster in some performance metrics compared to the Snapdragon chip over here that is really, really impressive. But what Qualcomm was able to accomplish with these Snapdragon X chips is also really impressive. Apple now has four generations of M chips, but this is their literal first attempt at building a laptop chip, and they're already able to beat Apple Silicon in some key performance metrics. So when it comes down to picking the winner between these two laptops, I don't think Microsoft has beaten Apple at their own game. They've definitely made a device that has a lot of similar qualities to the MacBook Air, but the battery life, the fanless architecture, and the thin and light design, really, I think the MacBook Air is better. And I know that's not exactly surprising because this is a very Apple-centric channel, but I think the numbers speak for themselves, yes, the Microsoft Surface Laptop is going to have slightly better performance in some ways, and it obviously has greater x86 compatibility. The fact that I can just download Steam, install normal x86 games, and fire them up straight away right out of the box is really promising for the future of ARM on Windows. And I think devices like this are going to supercharge the rate at which developers accept ARM when they're making programs and games. So I think that Qualcomm and Microsoft in building a product like this are only contributing positively. But at the same time, the MacBook Air is better. I'm sorry. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And of course, be sure to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.